Good evening. My name is Owen Curry. The ghost story as we love it today was largely pioneered by writers from Ireland, most prominent of all, Bram Stoker. But much of the atmosphere that inspired these writers is to be found around us here in North Kildare, Sheridan Le Fanu had a hugely influential horror novel, The House by the Churchyard, it was published in 1863. And part of it was set in North Kildare with frequent references to Leaxlip, from where George Townshend I was running the country during the period of the novel, 1767. We're going to take a look at 10 ghost stories or references to haunting that come from the locality. Happy Halloween. Number one, the crack in the hearthstone in the dining room at Castletown House. This came about after Tom Connolly invited home a stranger he met while out hunting for a game of cards in the 1780s. When he dropped a card and bent down to pick it up, he saw the stranger had a cloven hoof challenged as to his real identity and he made his departure through the crack in the heart and nobody recorded whether he left his winnings behind. Two, a rat coffee woman allegedly executed for cannibalism around 1790. She has been known to return to haunt the district in which she, in the guise of a black dog. Her house is at Bahrain, one mile north of Rat Coffee. It was demolished after her execution and the field is still known as Hungry Hall. During her trial, she told the magistrate, Thomas Wogan Brown, that human flesh is sweeter than any other meat. In the 1860s, a Rat Coffee farmer, Pat Gill, reported meeting a mysterious white apparition which haunted the crossroads where the execution took place said to be the mother of one of the victims. Number three, the fairy rats. During the construction of a road from Selbridge to Lady Castle around 1803, the builders disturbed a fairy rats, pedestrians along that road, sometimes find that the road mysteriously gets extended, leaving them walking for hours to travel a short distance. Number four, the haunted student bedroom in Rhetoric House in Maynooth College. This was the location of two tragic suicides, 19 years apart. The first on March the 1st, 1841, when Limerick born Sean O'Grady, and on April the 20th, 1860, by Thomas McGinn from Kilmore in County Wexford. The window was bricked up just before Halloween in 1860. The wall into the corridor was knocked down and the room was converted into an oratory to St. Joseph, patron of peaceful death. Legends associated with the room included a priest whose hair turned white the morning after he had kept a vigil in the room and a charred mark on the floorboard in the shape of a cloven hoof and bloodstains that proved impossible to remove. Five, the laneway to Thomas Wogan Brown's home, Castle Brown, which has served as Clongo's Wood College since 1815, is haunted by a headless horseman who stalks those brave enough to pass the laneway at midnight. A coach manned by a headless horseman drawn by headless horses has also been seen in the driveway to Dunedee Castle. Six, also at Dunedee Castle. A lady guest at one of Gerald George Aylmer's grand balls in Dunedee Castle in the 1860s, moved upstairs to view the gathering below. She leaned too far over the banister and fell down the stairwell. She still alights the stairs of the ruined castle, dressed in white. Seven. When a passenger train came to a halt near Straffan Station on October the 5th, 1853, a railway porter who was asked to flag down the coming train set off with a lamp. The train failed to stop. 18 people were killed in the collision. And on foggy nights, the railway man is still to be seen, forlornly waving his red lamp in a vain bid to stop the ever coming train. Eight, a young nace woman went to work for a woman in Johnstown who lost 
her only son in the First World War. The woman turned to spiritualism in the hope of reaching her son and used the maid as a medium. As a result, the girl became possessed. And when she went to work for the priest of Allen during the winter of 1990, 1920, there were strange knockings and tappings in the house. The priest performed an exorcism, but during this, his hair turned white and he died soon afterwards. The story may have formed the inspiration of Frank Carney's play, The Righteous Are Bold, first staged at the Abbey Theatre in Dublin in 1946 in the 1950s in Nace, the parish priest recommended that the actress playing Nora should receive daily Holy Communion to protect her, just in case the evil spirits might return. Nine, a landed gentleman passed an old woman in his carriage. She asked for money and he refused and swore at her. She cursed him, declaring that when the last branch falls off the old elm tree in his driveway, his family would become extinct. He put heavy iron chains on the tree, so no branch will ever fall from it. But it did, and so ended his family line. The story can alternate between families, but the Fitzgeralds and the Cloncurry dynasties fit the tale best. 10. Builders who started excavating the Grand Canal in our clock in 1756 were warned not to build their canal too close to the local graveyard. They ignored the warning. And then, to tempt fate further, the site was given an unlucky number, the 13th lock. The lock was feared by superstitious boatmen who said strange spectres could be seen there late at night. And the canal was said to swallow boatmen who lingered too long. It became the subject of two poems, one of them by Arthur Griffith. The canal here indeed passes within 80 yards of a graveyard, the graveyard of Clonaglas. Just saying. Happy Halloween. <laughs>